Hello, in today's video I'm going to tell you about a relatively unknown feature in Access, which is how you can add a multi-select filter feature to continuous forms. There is a related article on my website, idadogs.co.uk, multi-select filter continuous form. It will have much the same information as I'm going to show you in this video with some additional detail as well you can read at your leisure. Now when I say multi-select filter what I mean is a series of checkboxes which allows you to select one or more records which are in the field that you've selected here. So you've got a series of checkboxes for surname here and here for first name. In a data sheet this feature is built in. Unfortunately continuous forms that feature was never added by the Access team. But though it's not widely known how you do it, it can easily be added to continuous forms as well. And you can do that either from the user interface or, my preference, using VBA code. And there's two different methods of doing that. In fact, both of those are easily done. As I say, the idea is to get a series of checkboxes here so you can select one or more items easily. And they are actually surprisingly easy to do. So let's go show you the database. I'm going to start off with a data sheet form to show you the full functionality and this is all built in no code at all has been added here. So if we right click we get the context menu which allows you to sort, it also allows you to filter in different ways and if you've selected a particular surname it allows you to select either anything that equals that name there clear that or we can do this in the opposite way here we do it for it does not equal Georgia in here and so on select all and here let's have just females and you can do the same for each of these but for data sheet forms we also have an additional option built into the form and that is in the header row we've got a little down arrow and if we left click on that then you will see the multi select here's checkboxes here so if we untick this and select a few of those we filter down and we just get the ones we've chosen here and we can now clear that and do the same with any of the others here we can actually select FM and so on. The year group is quite interesting it's a number field but you'll notice that it's been sorted the year groups 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 it's been sorted in what is effectively alphabetical order as a text field 10, 11, 7, 8, 9 with ones coming before 7, 8 and 9 but the filter works in exactly the same way similarly for tutor group the two other fields here date of birth if I click on that I don't get the drop down list similarly for pupil ID I don't get the drop down list and when I first saw this issue I began to wonder whether it was to do with the number of different records I'd got I've got a total of just under 1500 records here this is the primary key field so I've got 1483 as it is there records for this and for date of birth I've got slightly less than 1500 because I've got a few duplicates but I've got a larger number of unique records Whereas for surname, I've got some duplicates for forename, you know, duplicates obviously for gender I've only got, in this case M and F, although I could have added some others depending on the way you define genders, and so on. Now, I had my suspicions, as I say, that it was to do with the maximum number of records in that field. And I decided to test that by setting up a query with the top thousand records. You can see 1483 in all, I've only taken the top thousand. When I click on pupil ID, I now get full list as I do there. So it really does seem to be related to the number of records and the reason is an option that is set for the current database where in order to maximize performance you don't display lists when you have more than a certain number of records and by default that number is a thousand. So because I've got 1483 primary key records there then I'm not going to get the list because it's more than a thousand simply for the date of birth but if I increase that to be equal to or just above the number of records I have to restart the database I can just compact it, it has the same effect and now I get the full 
left click multi select option but the warning with that is probably isn't going to be a problem for 1500 it appears quickly enough but say you had a hundred thousand or a million records or whatever it's going to take some time for access to build that list and therefore performance will suffer so therefore if you have a very large number of records it's not a good idea to actually allow all of those to appear in one of these lists here so take care with that now for continuous forms you get similar right click functionality as before you get exactly the same idea you get the same long list for dates and so on you get the same filters for all of them but what you don't have is the left click either in the header or in the field itself so you need to find a way around that if you want to add that functionality and the way most people do it is the uh, a checkbox either a bound checkbox which I've done here or an unbound one both can be used just to need slightly different methods to do that and in this particular case then if I click on a few of these at random and then click selected I get those it's acting like a multi-select filter do the opposite here I can select all of them so if I do the not selected there's none there I can clear them all and so on and the code for this isn't actually that complicated but adding three buttons and a checkbox is a bit more of a problem here and an extra field in this case here so with the checkbox then what happens is that field there that I've got the checkbox that I've called tag and if I click on this when the caption is select all then it will update all of those it will then change the caption to clear all and it actually updates that field to true so all of those are now selected and if I actually do this again they're all unselected simple enough and for each of these buttons then what it's doing is it's just changing the record source to be if we have just those that have been selected just the ones that are true or just the ones that are false as I say it's not difficult to do but it's more effort than you actually need there is a simpler way let's come back to our continuous form again I want that multi-select functionality well I'm going to click on surname go to the home ribbon and there's a very large filter button and when we do that the multi-select option appears and that works for each of the other fields as well in exactly the same way and because I've now increased the list here to 1500 it's going to work for the date and it's also going to work for the primary key field the only problem is you've got to move away from the from the form to the ribbon okay if you've got the ribbon maximized it's not quite such a hassle there but it seems to be relatively unknown because people just don't move from form to ribbon for the sake of it so it works but there's a better way still and that is to use code so if we just now close that and if I go to the code for this I've actually put the code in already I've just disabled it so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to remove the comments and in fact I've still got some comments on there you'll see why in a second here let's go to the top the very first thing is a form load event well, I'll just save that form here let's load that again and the form load event just so I actually really know I've got the filter of the code applied here the form load event just changes the caption up there now I've now added code to both the labels on the click event and I've used the double click event for the fields themselves I don't need to do both but I'm just showing you the different ways of doing this so if we collect select on the date of birth label here what happened there is it selects sets the focus first of all to the field and then it applies this code using command bars application command bars execute MSO filters menu it's exactly the same code that is built in to data sheet forms there and when I click on that then as you can see that creates the multi select filter the second code I could use but I've commented it out here is do command run command AC command filter menu they both work and just to show you that they both work I've used the other one on the field itself now I don't really want to be able to, to have the same multi select option appear every time I click on something so I've changed it to be the double click event here and exactly the same functionality then 
with each of those there and on the double click event I've chosen to use do command run command I don't need to set focus here because the focus is already on the field there and that will work for each of those use whichever of those you prefer most people will be more familiar with the do command run command AC command filter menu of code here but use whichever you prefer they both work in almost all circumstances. There is an exception which I'm about to show you now. I've got another version here, a subform, which I'm also going to use in main form here. I've added the same code to each of the headers. In some cases I've used do command run command, in other cases I've used the command bars code. I've only added it to here, I've just put it on a single click event this time. If I now close that and go to the subform, Notice the difference here. I get an error. When I use the execute MSO or command bars code in a subform, it fails with this error. I've got that code there on the pupil ID field. I've used the do command run command here. That works fine. Do command run command. Gender, I've used the other one. Same error. So in a subform, for reasons that I'm not clear about, I think it's a bug, application command bars code fails with that error there. There's no way of escaping that there. So if you want to use this in a subform, I recommend you use do command run command that works in either a form or a subform. You might prefer to use that all the time. That's it for today. As I said, we've now got the same functionality in forms and subforms okay as we do in data sheets it works also in split forms whether you use a continuous form or a data sheet it also even works in a single form though it's not particularly useful there and that's it for today and just to finish off then just to say thanks for watching if you found it useful please add a like and leave a comment do suggest topics for future videos in this series there will be more on filtering including the even less well-known filter by form feature and do subscribe you'll be notified whenever i do release new videos thanks again i'll see you soon